Mark from Fire Mountain Outdoors. You know, today we got some new gongs. Got this from Matt over at Steel Horse Customs. You know, there's nothing quite like shooting steel. I love the audible response. Boom, bing, hey, I got a hit. I also like to see the target move and give a little bit. So let's compare and contrast shooting mild steel versus AR-500. Uh, first, mild steel is readily available. You can usually find it in your scrap yards or recycle uh, bins, steel blanks or whatever. You can get a lot of the same value as far as uh, a, an audio response and a visual response by shooting uh, mild steel. Uh, its advantages are it's cheap, it's readily available. The disadvantage is, guess what folks, it's unsafe. If you shoot uh, mild steel, it's going to crater and it's going to pit. And it will cause the, the bullets and or the jackets to go into those craters and spray back towards you, the shooter. Uh, the other drawback is that, guess what, it's not going to last forever because you're going to shoot it out. Those, uh, those craters will get make the steel thinner and thinner and pretty soon you got a hole in the middle and you lose that audible response. You don't know if you hit or you missed because you've done shot through the hole in the middle of it. Let's talk about the pros and the cons of AR-500. AR-500 isn't readily available. I actually looked at buying my own AR-500 plate. Uh, I called the local supply house and a sheet of it cost $750. Well, I was barely interested in spending $750 for a sheet of steel that I would then have to cut into my own gongs. So AR-500 is not readily available and it's obviously very expensive. The benefits are, guess what, lasts a lifetime. You're not going to rust this out in your lifetime, nor are you going to shoot it out unless you're using really thin steel and using really big guns really close. The benefits to AR-500 well, well, well outweigh the, uh, the drawbacks and the, and the little bit of investment. So let's, uh, let's take this out in the range and go shoot it. All right, so we're out here at the range and we're gonna compare some mild steel. This is just some 3 8 mild steel that I dug out from behind the shop. And it's the same thickness as this AR-500 plate that we have that we got from Steel Horse Customs. We're gonna be shooting this with 762 by 39 and uh, 556 out of an AK and uh, AR-15. Right. So we're gonna get to shooting and then we'll talk about the differences and uh, why this is better. All right, we're going to be using the AR-15 chambered in 5.56 today. So we're going to go ahead and make this weapon hot and send some lead down range. First shots are going to be in the AR-500. I'm going to be shooting the left target. And here we go. And now we're going to transition to the mild steel. We have that down low. You can see already it punched the hole for it. All right. The uh, the results are pretty astonishing, but what pretty much what we were figuring out, uh, we've got with the mild steel here. We can see that we pierced the uh, the steel both times, and uh, right here on the AR 500, you know, it just left behind some of the uh, the copper jacket on that, and uh, absolutely no hole on that. It's smooth, so proof is in the pudding. AR-500 versus mild steel. All right, so Bob just put uh, two 5.56 five, rounds straight through that 3.8 uh, mild steel plate and uh, just barely impacted the AR-500. We're going to put some 7.62 by 39 rounds out of this uh, AK-47. Uh, once again, two in the steel and two in the plate and see what that looks like. Well, maybe only one, because it knocked it over. Well, I couldn't stop it, too. That was more than two shoot. shots, Mark. <laughs> Let's go look at them. All right. Okay, so we can see that the 7.62 by 39 from the AK, I hit a little bit tall and a little bit high, but it put a severe dent in the back. If I would have hit square here, it would have uh, it would have put a giant crater in it. And that crater is what makes shooting mild steel unsafe. 
if if I had a big crater here and then followed it with a lesser caliber like a, a 30 30 or a lower energy round that that uh, lead and jacket would enter that crater and then sling around and come back towards the shooter with the mild steel or with the AR 500 plate rather it hits and the and the splatter is safely contained in a 90 degree plane away from the shooter uh, you can see great examples of first uh, splatter coming back at the shooter if you click this link here and then if you look right over here you can see a great little video one of my favorite videos ever of uh, steel impacting uh, bullets impacting steel and, and AR 500 and just the the straight flat pattern so whenever you're shooting at a hard object you have to think of this I highly recommend watching that video all the way through so that you have an understanding of the bullet dynamics but if you're gonna shoot steel at the house or at your own personal range or a private range I really highly recommend to stay safe and buy some AR 500 gongs just like these ones from Steel Horse Customs